Well, hi there, Papper people. Now, as a famous YouTuber, I freaking <laughs> I can't keep a straight face on that one. Now, a friend recently alerted me to a CPAP forum thread with my name as the title. This is gonna be juicy. Now, Bob SK8 writes, I see there are quite a few videos on YouTube on apnea. And I was wondering what the opinion of the videos by Lanky Lefty 27 that members of this forum have. And in unison, all the members of CPAP Talk said, he's f awesome. Okay, that didn't happen. Lazarus writes, Jason is respected, but no one agrees with everything he says 100% of the time, of course. That's fair. As we scroll down, Pale Rider writes, Jason has had a blind spot about Respironix machines, which I think he's gotten over. That's true. Respironix machines are poo. And about auto machines, which I think might be getting better on since he's using an auto set himself now. I am using an auto set, but APAPs and auto sets used in APAP mode, I also think are poo. Check the description box down below for my video on APAPs and why I think they suck. But otherwise, he's pretty good. Now, though Pale Rider gets a bad rap on forums, I've heard a lot of people complain about him. I overall think he's a really nice guy. I've actually spoken to him. And Lazarus continues, and doesn't he have an issue with using EPR or something? And then Pale Rider writes, oh yeah, another quote unquote EPR is bad, get a buy level at times. That's fair criticism. JL Smith 7 writes, I think he definitely has valid points. I think the main issue is that he thinks what works for him will work for everyone else. But yeah, all the comfort features, ramp, EPR, etc., are forbidden in his realm. Definitely has some useful info just like anyone else, but not everything is going to work or agree with. Now, those are some great points of criticism, and I want to address mostly just the EPR one because I have recently done an APAP criticism of why I'm specifically critical of using automatic titrating CPAP machines, or I should say actually more specifically APAP mode. I also recently did a video on ramp and why I feel they shouldn't be used or at least overused. And I wanna make it fairly clear that I don't think, nor have I ever stated that one thing works for everyone. I think the thing, the problem is with using YouTube is you have to speak sometimes in generalities. I can't say, you, this is gonna work for you because I'm speaking to an entire audience. So for most people with using the example of the ramp video, I say this is what happens during ramp. If you're using long ramps, you're probably gonna be under titrated for those, that entire period. And so it's not gonna have a good effect. I think we can all agree on that. But I'm not saying ramp is bad. If not using ramp is a deal breaker, by all means use ramp. And I'm very consistent with this when I'm doing re reviews, Oscar reviews on people using my, my my website, AXG Sleep Diagnostics. Always find a way to work it in. Boom! <laughs> the same can be said with EPR. Now, I actually like that criticism. One, it's a very good question to ask, but it's also really funny. Use ape, don't use EPR, but use bi level. That's freaking hilarious. I like that. But it is a little bit misleading. Another quote unquote EPR is bad, get a bi level at times. Serious lanky here. Don't use EPR, but use bi level. That's a very funny joke with layers of complexity. Very funny jokes with layers of complexity should never be explained as it diminishes the effectiveness of the joke. But I'm a wet blanket. Let me explain the joke. An EPR of three is a decrease of three centimeters of water pressure, whereas bi-level can also be a decrease in centimeters of water pressure, typically three centimeters of water pressure or more, usually up to 10. As you can see, this joke is targeting something that essentially says, don't use bi-level, but now go ahead and use bi-level. While this is a very funny joke, I'm here to provide insight and take all the funny away. While seemingly the same on the surface, EPR is actually a much lesser and weaker form of bi-level. For one, it is only three centimeters of water pressure at most. On the inspiratory phase of the respiration, the EPR is a very slow and smooth transition. It doesn't provide the punch that you would like to see the further open up the airway. With bi-level, this is different. One, you have a much greater pressure support, or at least a potential of greater pressure support. And on the inspiration phase of the respiration, it's much punchier, it gets there faster, it's much more effective. Now I wanna tell you a joke of my own. Why did the chicken not make it across the road? Because it got hit by a car and died. Bye. First thing is I wanna point you to a website. This is from the Journal 
of Clinical Sleep Medicine, very well-respected journal, and this is from 2016. Now, I'm not trying to brag. I was bitching about EPR in 2015 for this reason as well as others. But some of you want a damn journal article, so here's your journal article. Now this is titled, Pressure Relief Features of Fixed and Auto Type Trading, Continuous Positive Airway Pressure May Impair Their Efficacy Evaluation with a Respiratory Bench Model. This is a hell of a long article. It's got wonderful graphs. They compare several different machines. They compare people using APAP with and without EPR turned on, as well as Flex, all the difference, C-Flex, C-Flex Plus, A-Flex, all of those. They even use uh, P-Flex. Can't remember what machine that is. Prisma, I think, could be wrong. And then they go through and do the exact same thing with CPAP, just a CPAP pressure of what appears to be the person's optimal CPAP pressure, and then they put on EPR or Flex or C-Flex Plus. So I'm just gonna read you the conclusion of what they found. Conclusions, pressure relief features may attenuate or lessen CPAP efficacy if not adjusted for at the time of their introduction. In clinical practice, efficacy can be ensured by increasing the therapeutic pressure delivered by fixed CPAP or by enabling the pressure relief features prior to initial pressure titration. Device reported pressures in APAP devices with pressure relief activated may overstate delivered pressures. Fancy talk for a nada. Here's what happens in, in actual practice. So tech at night goes in, they put you to pressure, doctor, everyone agrees, ah, 12 centimeters of water is this patient's optimal pressure without EPR or the flex setting. But when you go home, the god dang respiratory therapist, always gotta get a dig in, says, ah, right, let's put you on EPR because it feels good. So then what happens is that 12 put on EPR of three or flex of whatever becomes less. Let's use EPR for example of three. Now that 12 effectively becomes a nine because on exhalation, it's dropping by three centimeters of water. So you're not getting the full benefit of CPAP at that time. Now what it's also saying is if it's been accounted for, if the night technician titrated you with EPR on, then you go home with EPR also on, you're gonna be fine. And I agree with that. There's, I have no problems with that. That's, that's just simply logical. And here's another point that we need to go Spell over. Spell Jocelyn? It, Jocelyn? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Jocelyn, if I'm looking for good CPAP supplies, where shall I go? CPAPsupplies.com is where I would buy CPAP equipment. So like so I was saying. Jocelyn, do they have a uh, good mask to buy? Yes, you can buy any mask you want there. Some require prescriptions. Some don't. Uh, Jocelyn, what if I don't like the CPAP mask that I bought from CPAPsupplies.com? Yes, if, if you're not satisfied with the mask, you have a 30-day mask guarantee. Jocelyn, do, do they still have the Lotta Rewards program, Jocelyn? Yes, they still have their loyalty rewards program. For every $100 you spend, you get a bunch of points, and you can use those points, and they don't expire. You just have to sign up. Um, That's what I was saying. Hem, hem, Jocelyn, one more question. But Jason, Jason, you say, are there other reasons you don't like EPR? Now there is another reason I don't like EPR. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a spiffy graphic for you. But in general, what I don't like about EPR, I need to be very general on this, but I understand that this question came because I'm not real specific about it. In general, when people are on EPR, You'll see breathing pattern going. It's fairly flat as far as peak to trough, peak to trough, crest to trough, crest to trough. They'll have an arousal. They blow off CO2, and now they start to breathing. They'll have a typical post-arousal central hypopnea or post-arousal central apnea, but that waxing and waning pattern, which usually persists for one to two cycles, now persists for up to five to 10 minutes. Now, there's probably no arousals during that period, but what happens is the EPR flexing up and down, up and down is blowing off too much CO2. This is causing imbalance in the blood oxygen levels, in the blood pH, and it's causing that imbalance after, and it persists for a long time. Now you're not waking up, so you're probably not gonna be tired, but you are gonna be having blood oxygen desaturations. You're gonna wake up with a nasty headache and get all pissed off and quit CPAP, and then it makes me look bad, makes everyone look bad, and I don't like it. 
So what I have found in the lab and in practice using AXG sleep diagnostics, Oscar pap therapy analysis, when people turn off the EPR, that pattern goes away. It's flat, 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 they wake up, blow off a little CO2, post arousal central apnea, not a big deal, and then they basically stabilize very quickly and continue breathing. Now that's at low pressures. This is where it comes into play where, where uh, pale riders' comments are kind of funny. So once you start to increase the pressure, let's say that was at like eight, that example. If we go nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and this is all without EPR on, at some point, you're gonna be causing CO2 to not get blown off. You're not able to exhale as much as you normally would and CO2 starts to be retained inside of you. So now you have the opposite problem. You have too much CO2. And at some point you start breathing really hard to try to get rid of it. Then your respiratory drive drops, your respiratory drive increases, drops again, increases, and you get that waxing and waning pro uh, process or pattern for the opposite reason. So now you need to add EPR or by level. So you need a lower expiratory pressure that will allow you to blow off more CO2 and allows you to stabilize your respiratory drive and which is your breathing pattern and it becomes flat. So this is why some people you either need CPAP or you need bi level. If you add EPR, that is bi level. So when Pell Rider says, ah, sometimes he says turn off EPR because it causes problems, but then he says you can fix those problems by adding bi level. I totally get it. At lower pressures, EPR usually is a detriment. And when you increase those pressures, at some point you're gonna get to a spot where you start to retain CO2. And at that point, if you need those higher pressures, bi level is gonna be much more appropriate for you. EPR and flex used to always be billed as it's a comfort setting. This article that I shared with you, it basically shows you it's not just a comfort setting. It's much, much more than that. Hi, post-production Jason here, and we have Stewie the cat. This is a cat channel first and foremost. So what I wanted to say that I, I kind of forgot to mention in the, the primary recording of this is EPR and the use of it at higher pressure. So oftentimes when I'm doing sessions with people, and we keep increasing the pressure because they have like a stubborn airway. You keep increasing the pressure, it doesn't really seem to do anything, but it starts getting so high. You like an upper airway resistance syndrome setting or situation scenario. Um, I will go to EPR. And the reason I do that is because really it's the only tool that we have at our disposal. Yeah, I would love to put them on bi-level, but they don't have a bi-level machine. They have an APAP, they have EPR. So we use the tools that we have at our disposal. We use the resources that we have, and that's not bi-level. Bi-level is always ideal, but uh, as far as EPR, when it's transitioning to the inspiratory phase of the breath, it delivers it very slow. Bi-level is much punchier, uh, and you can really control that with bi-level. I really just wanted to mention that in case that is a point of contention with EPR, but I think you already heard that from business, Jason. So I think we're good there. Depending on whatever pressure you're on, again, I'm talking in terms of CPAP. If you're using APAP, your pressure is increasing and decreasing so much, it makes it very hard on your body to stabilize your blood chemistry, your pH, your CO2, O2 balance. It makes it very difficult when the pressure is rising and falling. In general, that's why I don't like it. Plus it's just really bad at it. It misinterprets things all the time. Again, check out my video on that if, if you're curious about that. So I'm talking about just static CPAP pressures. Whatever you require, you need whatever you need to balance that blood chemistry. Maybe you have congestive heart failure. Maybe you have COPD. In those cases, you're going to need bi-level. Maybe you don't have that. Maybe you have a very, very stubborn airway that requires a lot of pressure. And maybe your, your threshold for CO2 is much higher than someone else and you can get away with having a really high pressure without that pressure support of either EPR or bi-level. They're both pressure support. So it's very dependent on you. But one thing I can say with absolute certainty is blanketly putting everyone on EPR is for sure at the very minimum detrimental in that they will have long-term post-arousal central hypopneas. Does everyone have these? No but a very, very large number of people have them, so much so that I feel comfortable telling everyone, just turn it off unless you absolutely feel you need it. And it also helps to have a little data to back up that it's not causing those central hypopneas 
that are causing blood oxygen desaturations. Hopefully that hella long complex explanation cleared some things up. If not, whatever. Now the thread continues. If Jason's views have changed somewhat over time, I respect that. You know what? My opinion on a lot of stuff actually has changed. Some things haven't changed. I've, I've remained steadfast, but yeah, I do change my opinion. That is certainly fair. And uh, as yeah, that's fair. Now later on in the thread, Chunky Frog here, as if we're pieces of beef, meat to be gawked at. This is not acceptable, but I'll, I'll continue. Chunky Frog writes, and of the two, Jason is a lot easier to look at. Now I gotta say, I've got me a little thing for Chunky, Chunky Frog. Frog. What are you looking at? Nothing. Then even later on down the line, we have maybe we can do a men and women of sleep apnea calendar like they did in Calendar Girls or the full Monty. That should give Froggy 12 months of salacious dreams. Oh, oh, dear, dear God, please let me be Mr. December. Guys, let me know what you think of this in the comment section down below. Check the description box. I'm gonna be filling that bad boy up with links galore. Don't forget on Amazon to pick up some Mass Bright. Sprayer sucks, product is really nice. That's what the reviews say. Pretty soon I'm gonna stop selling them with those fucking sprayers. I wanna thank all my Patreon supporters, all my YouTube members, and I also really wanna thank the sponsor of this video and this channel, cpapsupplies.com. Guys, it's a cold night, even if it's in summer. Stay warm by the fire. I appreciate all your support. Have a great night. Bye. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy, to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espelong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swearingen, Chung Chu Chen, and Edward Steiner, as well as a big thank you to all my other Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Little tiny thanks, buddy, for you guys. And when the inspiration phase of the respiratory wave 